Welcome to the Curate Your Life podcast with Demetria, where we focus on curating the life you've been dreaming of, one goal at a time. Okay, y'all, there's about to be a whole lot going on. First of all, I a little bit want to cry because I just recorded this whole episode. And when I started it, I said that I had a bet with myself that the maintenance man was going to show up in the middle of this and that I was gonna edit that part out, but I was gonna let you know if I won the bet or not. And I said, that's you know the way life happens. People, noises come up, people call when you're sitting down and watch a movie, things like that. Anyway, I recorded the whole podcast. He did not show up. And I remembered as I was listening to edit that I was supposed to tell you if he showed up or not. So I went back in, I thought, putting a clip at the bottom saying, and by the way, he didn't show up. And I recorded over the entire podcast, which is about 15 minutes long. So we are in the Hollywood fashion take two. Okay, welcome to the podcast. And what I said was, and what is still true is I love the Olympics. And now I'm going to tell you about all the reasons that I love the Olympics. And I'm just gonna believe that I was supposed to record this because this version is gonna be better than what was already recorded. We're just gonna go with that and believe that and trust that. So that might be just a bonus lesson for you here. But I wanna talk about the Olympics. I love them. I always watch them. I watch Winter Olympics. I watch Summer Olympics. If there were Spring Olympics, I'd probably watch those. But I love the opening ceremonies. I love it all. And I have loved this year even more. There are more things to love this year. First, I want to start with the unexpected snooper star of the Olympics, Snoop Dogg. I'm sorry, y'all, but I love this so much. Who knew? So this brings me to the first Olympic lesson of this podcast. Do not allow anyone to put you in a box or tell you what or who you should be. You are the author of your story. You can do and be anything, anything you want. So what or who do you want to be? Because you get to decide. You do not have to conform to what anybody says you should do or who you should be or what they want you to be. So Snoop was born Calvin Cortazar Brodus Jr. And I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly. And he's written quite the unique story, starting with the name, going from Calvin to Snoop. Okay, so he started out as a rapper, got pretty famous at that, and was known to as a rapper. And then he went on to co-host a cooking and lifestyle show with Martha Stewart. And I don't think any of us saw that coming, but it was great. It was funny. They seemed to have a good time. And then I found out that he coached or coaches, I think, still a youth football league. And I don't know if he started it or why he started it or why he decided to coach, but I love it. And I'm inspired by his giving back and spending time teaching and mentoring kids. And then I found out that he writes and performs children's songs and nursery rhymes. I love it. I love it all. And now he is the snooper star of the Olympics. I coined that term, snooper star, so hopefully it's going to catch on. But he is like Visa over there. He is everywhere that we want to be. He's in the stands with the families. He's commentating. He's carrying the torch. He's everywhere. And I think he's there because he and Kevin Hart did a spoof on commentating on an equestrian event And NBC saw it, and I guess they thought it was hilarious. I did too. It was pretty funny. It's on all the socials. It's a reel that you can probably find. But NBC saw it, and they reached out and invited him to be part of the Olympics, and a big part, evidently. And he said yes. And I don't know about y'all, but I am just, I'm loving it. I love that he didn't let the world put him in the box or only the box of gangster rapper. You have to say it like that. Um, 
he created his own path. And so here are the lessons from that. He decided to be who he wanted to be. And he said yes to things that were outside of the box. And he is having a blast and living his life. So that's lesson number one. Okay, so lesson number two is from, and I'm, pro I'm not going to pronounce this correctly. I'm going to try. Her name is Ziyin Zhang, and she's a 58-year-old woman who made her Olympic debut in table tennis this year at the Paris Games. And side note, it turns out that athletes in table tennis play into their prime, evidently, because when I Googled to find out more about Ziyin Zhang, I found out that there was a 61-year-old woman competing in the Olympics also, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that because she's part of this story as well. So the point of this story is that Ziyin Zhang played table tennis in her earlier life in China, and she moved to Chile. And I don't know if she specifically moved to teach, but she ended up teaching and coaching table tennis to kids. And at 58, an opportunity came up for her to compete in these Olympics. So she played table tennis as a young girl and she dreamed of going to the Olympics. But she stopped playing competitively because a rule change back when she was competing threw off her game. So she stopped playing and she moved to Chile. And sometime during the time that she moved to Chile, she took a 20 year hiatus from table tennis but she picked it up again during COVID, during the lockdown and COVID, because she wanted to stay active. So she started playing again and she was hooked and she decided that she wanted to compete and she started playing in tournaments. And she was inspired to try out for the Olympics when she found out that her former teammate from China was still playing at 60. And so they both qualified for the Paris Olympic Games. And so Ziyin Zhang at 58 lost her first match, but she said she was she had the time of her life with her husband and her sons rooting her on and she was thrilled that she did it. And her former teammate, Ni Zai Long, probably not the way you pronounce it, I found out won her first match of this Olympics. So she will continue on and I believe she defeated somebody who was 49. So again, if you have aspirations of going to the Olympics, if you have any skills in table tennis and you're willing to give it your all, you might still be able to make an Olympic team even if you are over 25, 30-ish. Anyway, the lesson there is you can and it's not too late. Coincidentally, I have a webinar that I offer from time to time titled exactly that, you can and it's not too late. The second lesson in that is never stop pursuing your passion. There may be bumps in the road, there may be setbacks, but don't let that stop you. Figure out how to overcome them. And speaking of figuring out how to overcome and come back, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about how inspiring it has been to witness the grit and the determination of Simone Biles. Now, I'm sure you know the story of her pulling out of most of her events at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. She withdrew because she was dealing with and experiencing the twisties, which is defined by the Cleveland Clinic as a mental block that creates a dangerous disconnect between the mind and body while gymnasts are airborne. And she talks about this in a documentary that she has on Netflix and in an interview that she gave during the Olympics. Okay, so we're gonna take these lessons one by one. First, take care of yourself first. And please know that it is not selfish. If you're not willing to put your mental and physical and emotional health first, how and why would you expect somebody else to? It's not selfish to take care of yourself and advocate for yourself. And I can't imagine how hard it must have been for her to speak up and say, hey, I can't do this. 
when she knew that her team was counting on her, that the world was watching, and she knew all the work that she put in. She wanted to be there. So I can imagine the courage that it took to say, I'm out, I can't do this. So that is the first lesson. Take care of yourself. And that is the lesson that we all need to heed. Second is they're going to have their opinions and you can't control them. And when I say opinions here, I really kind of mean shade because people who had no rounds, no real knowing of the situation, no compassion and no personal experience had a lot to say about her withdrawing from the competition. And I understand that professional sportscasters have a job to do, and that's to comment on and share information about the sport or event that's going on. But a lot of what I saw and heard and read was unprofessional. And I will say uncalled for. And she says it in her documentary on Netflix. She says a lot of the people who were commenting on commenting on me pulling out of the Olympics and what they thought I should be doing couldn't even do a cartwheel. And so there is a quote, and I'm going to mess it up, but it's basically you shouldn't take advice from or worry about what people say who aren't even in the game. So... I think that is the lesson there. And although I think it had to have gotten to her because she's a human, she got past it. She was able to hunker down and do what she knew needed to be done. And that takes us to the third lesson, is that whatever you want to do, whatever goal you're trying to achieve, you have got to be willing to go all out and do anything that it takes to get it. And so for her, that was going back to basics, to the beginning. She said she had to go back to the gym when she was ready, because first she had to get mentally ready. She saw a therapist, a sports therapist. And when she was mentally ready, she had to go back and she had to start with the basics. She had to get those down again and get to a place where she could do those confidently without being in her head. And I imagine that that was hard and humbling too, as the GOAT being in the gym with your peers who expect you to be at a certain level and being okay with starting with the basics and going back to the basics. And how many of us could do that? Would have the wherewithal to A, put in the work and do the grind again and to do it and be vulnerable and let people see you start from a place that is way behind where you thought you should be, where you were, where people expect you to be and be okay with that. And just to play all out and not know exactly if you can come back or how that's going to play out. But she was willing to do it. And that kind of brings me to another like bonus lesson that I thought about. All of these athletes, they work hard, they put all this effort in, and then they win the goal, or they win a medal, or they win the Super Bowl, and they don't stop. They'll go back a lot of times, and they keep going. They keep trying to get better. They keep trying to beat their own records. They go for another gold. They go for another Super Bowl win. They keep trying to get better and pursue that next level because it is all about growth and continuing to grow and reach and strive and the work that they put in the years and years and years of work so i want you to imagine what it would be like for you and i'm asking myself the same thing if we played all out if we didn't let anything stop us if we were willing to go back and master the basics and do it over and over and over again and fall down and get up and let people see you fall down and get up and be okay with it until you got to that place that you wanted and then when you got there made the decision that hey maybe 
I can go to this next place. Where would you be in your life? What would you have? And I am going to go ask myself that same question, that last question. Have I played all out? Am I giving in everything that I have? What if, what would it take to take it to the next level? I think it's a question worth asking. So if that's a question that you want to explore, if you want to explore how and what you need to do to reach your goal, if you want that outside perspective, that that coaching that all of those athletes have, even as good as they are, they all have coaches. If you want somebody to help you take it to the next level, I'm here. You can schedule a curate your life consultation. It's complimentary. And I will tell you that I have a coach. I get coached because I need that outside perspective. I need somebody to help me take my game to the next level. So I am here for you. Maintenance man still didn't come. I'm going to be very careful with this recording. Until next time, I hope you are enjoying the Olympics and I hope you have gotten a lot out of these lessons.